The 75th British Academy of Film Awards, also known as the BAFTAs, were held on the 13th of March 2022 at the Royal Albert Hall in London, honouring the best national and foreign films of 2021. The nominations were announced on the 3rd of February 2022, and the EE Rising Star Award nominees, which is the only category voted by the British public, were announced on the 1st of February. The nomination and eventual winner went to Lachana Lynch, which confused commentators who do not consider her rising as she's already played a major character in a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, Captain Marvel, as well as playing a major character within the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die, which kind of defeats the purpose of a rising star. The science fiction film epic Dune received the most nominations with 11. Dune received the most wins with 5, but did not take home any of the major category awards. This year, the ceremony was hosted by actress and comedian Rebel Wilson. Many of the winners weren't present to collect their awards, So the ceremony was exclusively in person for the first time in two years. This allowed a lot of the speeches from winners who were present to go at length. Now the BAFTAs have always been considered sort of the third most prestigious awards after the Golden Globes and of course the Oscars. Usually they'll give you a good sign as to who's going to be winning at the Oscars, although sometimes they can go in a completely different direction. The de facto theme of the ceremony was all things Bond. Opening the ceremony to mark the 60th anniversary of James Bond franchise, Dame Shirley Bassey, who connected with the franchise after contributing to the soundtrack of multiple Bond films throughout her career, performed Diamonds Are Forever. Also performing live to the ceremony was English actress Amelia Jones, nominated for Best Actress in Leading Role for a performance in Coda. She performed a rendition of Joni Mitchell's Both Sides Now, which her character sings in the film. And usually none of the Best Actress nominees were nominated in the same category at the 94th Academy Awards. Additionally, of all the actresses nominated for a BAFTA, only Lady Gaga had been nominated at the 28th Screen Actors Guild Awards. American film journalist Anne Thompson described Joanna Scallon's nomination in the category as bizarre. Of course, the shock of the night came when Scallon actually won Best Actress, who even surprised herself with the win. She won for her role in the film After Love and she beat out the likes of Lady Gaga from House of Gucci and Alana Hamm from Licorice Pitcher. The film is set in the port town of Dover, and she plays Mary Hussein and suddenly finds herself a widow following the unexpected death of her husband. A day after burial, she discovers that he has a secret just 21 miles across the English Channel in Calais. Less surprising was Will Smith taking home Best Actor for his role as Richard Williams in King Richard, nor was Power of the Dog winning Best Film or Jane Campion winning Best Director for the same film. For me, however, I would have loved Belfast to take home the best film, though it did win the most outstanding British film. Some worried that labelling Belfast as a British film could have been controversial, as of course it is set during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Campion most definitely deserved her director's win, with her well-told, beautifully shot homage to the West. And Smith was fantastic in King Richard, and so most thoroughly deserves this win. The two wins I was most happy about, of course, though, was Troy Kotzer as Frank Rossi in Coda and Ariana DeBoss as Anita in West Side Story. Troy became the first deaf actor to win a BAFTA, and he most definitely deserves this win, as his role as Frank Rossi is absolutely brilliant. And what more can I say about Ariana DeBoss as Anita in West Side Story? She most definitely deserves this Best Supporting Actress win. Overall, the ceremony has been criticised for exceptionally long speeches, but I think this is somewhat okay as everybody's sort of trying to get over the fact that we're actually back in front of a live audience and allowed to intermingle with each other once again after two years of isolation. Some were critical to the low attendance from nominees. The high number of absent nominees may be attributed to the ceremony taking place on the same day as the 27th Critics' Choice Awards, which rescheduled their ceremony shortly beforehand and stated that there was no other possible dates, acknowledging the clash and setting up a parallel venue in London, in addition to its usual host city of Los Angeles, to encourage people to attend both ceremonies. There have been mixed reviews this year for host Rebel Wilson. Wilson was selected as host after having presented an award at the previous in-person BAFTA ceremony in February 2020 where she had been one of the funniest parts of the whole ceremony. Now the BAFTAs are always seen as more of a serious and formal affair than a lot of the other award shows, and it could be pretty difficult to get a laugh from the audience. As a result, a couple of host Rebel Wilson's jokes fell a bit flat, but on the whole I thought the Australian did a fine job, delivering some solid one-liners in her opening monologue. A lot of actors also showed their support for the Ukraine in the midst of this most horrid and tumultuous times with the ongoing attack from Russia. The 75th British Academy Awards will go down as a ceremony that returned back to its glamorous ways, with the shock win for Joanna Scanlon, otherwise pretty much falling to script. Now onwards to the Oscars.